hidden meanings. Boy, I got some hidden meanings for you tonight, I'll tell you that. I wanted to share with you something that you may not have ever heard before. I'm sure that many of you have never heard it before. First of all, you know, many times if I talk to a, a mainline Christian, then that's fine. They'll, they'll say, well, is your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life? Let's write that down. The Lamb's Book of Life. Now, the ancients knew about that, okay? If you underline that word lamb, first thing you want to think of then is the lamb or the ram of God, which takes away the sins of the world, which is the constellation Aries. Okay, now why do I say that? Because, as you know, when the sun enters Aries in the springtime, that's when the springtime comes. But the sun must enter in intercourse with the Lamb of God, or Aries, before spring can come. Now, the ancients also said that there is a part of your body that connects to what is called the symbolism of the Lamb, or Aries, and that part is the pineal or pineal gland of the brain. It's also known, uh, Jesus called it, the single eye. Okay, you can look at it in the dictionary. It's the single eye, the third eye, the seat of the soul, the pineal or pineal gland of the brain. Now, back in Genesis 32.30, Jacob identified the use of that pineal or pineal gland. And in Genesis 32.30, Jacob said, I have seen God face to face, and I will call the place Peniel. I, I don't understand how anybody can see that and not understand the connection of the single eye. You know that single eye you see on the back of a one dollar bill? That's what Jesus said, if your eye be single, that's the pineal or pineal gland of the brain. And then Jacob, of course, saying, I have seen God face to face, I will call the name of the place Peniel. Now, here's the interesting part. Okay, well, is your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life? Okay, if you will just for a minute Think of the ancients and the mystical understanding of this, that the lamb is Aries, the ram, and that it is the pineal gland of the brain. Okay, let's, let's just go with that and see how far we get. So if that's the lamb, now here's the way they said you reached the lamb, or you had that marriage of the lamb. On the area of the spine, there are seven what the ancients called chakras, nerve centers. Chakras, C-H-A-K-R-A-S. They line up with the seven churches of the book of Revelation, incidentally. The seven chakras start at the sacrum, then go up to the sexual prostate area, to the solar plexus, to the heart, to the throat, to the head, and then finally to that pineal gland of the brain, to the Lamb of God. And so then the challenge is that through meditation one would climb those seven chakras or overcome those seven steps or those seven nerve centers, seven seals as it's said in the book, in the book of Revelation, and raise yourself up to that which is the pineal gland of the brain, which in turn the energy from the meditation would light that which is the right hemisphere, or the eastern sky. Now, of course, if you take this and look at this astronomically, that's exactly what happens. Because by the crucifixion of the flesh, Jesus Christ rises up and sits at the right hand of the Father. After the Son on December the 21st enters into the constellation of the Southern Cross, crucifixion, it sits three days, three nights in the tomb of the earth, which is the winter solstice. Then through the constellation of Virgo, the virgin constellation, it rises out on December the 25th up to the Lamb, or Aries, and then sits at the, in the uh, northern sky, sits at the eastern uh, side, or the right hemisphere, and summer comes to the earth. So you see the connection there between the life of Jesus Christ, the movement of the sun, and these constellations. Now why do I show you this <coughs> and connect it with the Lamb's Book of Life? Now remember, what did we say? First of all, we said this all is, uh, I'll get another piece of chalk here. This all is going to activate the right hemisphere. Let's write that word down and watch that one. The right hemisphere, okay? Now what's the second part of this? It's within you. 
Okay, it's within you. There are, as we said, the seven seals that rise, those seven chakras which rise up the back, so put it on the back at the spine. Okay, and as I said, seven chakras or seven seals. Okay, now I'm going to show you how little most mainline Christian people understand when they say, is your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life? If we are taking the premise that the Lamb is Aries, which is connected or, or symbol of the pineal gland of the brain, and that in order to activate that or have that intercourse with that Lamb, we must rise up the seven chakras through meditation and then sit at the right hand or activate the right hemisphere of the brain. So then, in order to activate the right hemisphere of the brain mystically, we must climb those seven chakras or seven seals which are located within you and on the back at the spine. Alright, now this is the reason I wanted to share this with you. Now somebody says, is your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life? Well, it's hard to take that, you know, literally because we're not talking about a real lamb, so there must be a representation, which I told you is Aries or the pineal gland of the brain. If you go to Revelation 5, and you can look this up in your Bible, we'll have a description of the Lamb's Book of Life. Revelation 5, verse 1. Now here, first of all, we have, and it says, And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne. There you have the right hemisphere of the brain in the right hand. It could have been in his left hand. Why did they specify the right hand? The right hemisphere of the brain. The eastern part. The right part. Okay? And of him who sat on the throne, in mysticism and out of the Kabbalah, the throne is the higher consciousness. You can look that up. Uh, the book of Revelation, much of the book of Revelation comes out of the ba uh, Kabbalah, which is a uh, part of Buddhism. It, 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 it actually came out of Buddhism. So here then we understand I saw in the right hand, so we talked about activating the right hemisphere of the brain, of him that sat on the throne, which is the higher consciousness, a book written within. A book written within, and on the back side, sealed with seven seals. That's what it says in the Bible, Revelation 5.1. That's the description of the Lamb's Book of Life. It's in the right hand, that means it's the right hemisphere of the brain, okay, a book written within, within you. Remember, Jesus Christ said the kingdom of God is within you. Okay. On the back side, that connects it to the seven chakras which rise up to the spine, the seven seals. Sealed with seven seals, which identifies the seven chakras. Yes, indeed, the chakras is Hindu and so forth and so on. And there is no difference between that and what you see in the book of Revelation. How can you not see that? How can you, if there is such a thing, and as there is, of a great mystical and spiritual understanding of the pineal gland of the brain, which is, stimulates the right hemisphere of the brain to open up that which is God's dwelling place to you, and which is reached by overcoming these seven chakras, and it's within you that this all happens, and this energy rises up the spine. How can you not identify that when you say, I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the back side sealed with seven seals or seven chakras? That's the identification of the Lamb's book of life. And so when somebody, especially in the mainline religion, will say, well, you know, stay away from that stuff, you're staying away from this stuff. Oh, you know, I don't want to get into that chakra business. I don't believe in that stuff. But it says seven seals on the back side within. And that's what the chakras are. Seven chakras on the spine, on the back side, within you. And that's the Lamb's Book of Life. And you're going to find out that 99 and 9 tenths percent of quote-unquote born-again Christians know nothing about this. And therefore their name could not possibly be written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Because what it means, when they use the word name... It doesn't mean name, Joe Blow, it means way. Name means way in mysticism. Well, how do you know that name means way? How do you know that bull means conversation when you say, let's go shoot the bull? But bull does mean conversation, so that's a lot of bull. What does that mean? That's a lot of nonsense. Well, how do you know bull means nonsense? Well, how do I know name means way? Because it does in the ancient mysticism and in the writings. That's why when people say, if you ask for this in the name of Jesus, excuse me, People will say, oh, we ask it in Jesus' name. has nothing whatsoever to do with that because that wasn't the man's name anyhow. J 
Jesus' name was Jehoshua. So why don't they use his real name? You're using somebody else's name. Who is Jesus? If you saw Jesus uh, in the Holy Land during the time when he was physically alive and you called him Jesus, he'd never turn around because that wasn't his name anyhow. So if you ask something in his name, at least, if you're going to say that it's the proper name, you should use his right name, don't you think? No wonder they don't get their prayers answered. They're asking the wrong guy. Now, when you say that it's in Jesus' name, it means in his way. You're doing things the way he said. And he's the one that taught this stuff. Yes, he did. He's the guy that said in Matthew 6, 22, if your eye be single, your body will fill with light. The single eye is the pineal gland of the brain, and if you look it up in a medical dictionary, it secretes melatonin, which is a skin lightener. It's light. He said that. He says he's going to sit at the right hand of the Father. He says, so will you. That's the right hemisphere of the brain. He said the kingdom of God is within you. The book is within you. And of course, we understand that mounting these seven, it's the same as Joshua going around the wall of Jericho. Do you honestly believe there was a guy that went around the wall seven times and the wall fell down? That's mysticism. It's mythology. It's talking about spiritual things. It's the wall that keeps you from the freedom of your higher mind. And when you mount those seven seals, you're going around the wall seven times, and that's when it'll fall down. Now, let me show you something that's interesting. Oh, I think that's pretty interesting, don't you? Okay. Let me show you something. When we talk about the right hemisphere of the brain, and we talk about the temple, Jesus said, you're the temple. The Apostle Paul said, you're the temple. This thing right to the side of your head behind your eyes called a temple. When Jesus drove the money changers out of the temple, it means driving those crazy thoughts out of your mind. Now, in 1 Kings, in the Bible, there's something very interesting that goes back and helps us define what we're talking about right now. 1 Kings chapter 6. Now, Jesus Christ said, take no thought. If your eye be single, your body will fill with light. Cast your net to the right side, the narrow way, enter within. When you pray, enter the closet and close the door. All of those things mean that you must be in quiet meditation where there is no human thought. Above the thoughts of the mind, you must find a place of bliss, of nirvana, of absolute silence. The construction of your temple, then, must be in silence. It cannot be with prayer. It cannot be with going to church. It cannot be with reading a Bible. It cannot be any way but absolute silence, where there is no thought. Now, let me show you why. The Apostle Paul said, you are the temple. Okay. In 1 Kings 6, 7, it says, and the house, meaning the temple, when it was being built, was made ready before it was brought, so there was neither hammer, nor axe, nor any tool of iron heard while it was in the building. 1 Kings 6, 7. That means the temple, I'll use this one because that's out of ink. The temple was built in silence. Okay? That's what it says in 1 Kings 6, 7 in the Bible. The temple was built in silence. That's why Jesus Christ said, take no thought. That's why he talked about the single eye. Because your temple, remember Paul says, you are the temple. That temple of yours can be constructed only in absolute silence where there is no human thought. And the reason for that is, human thought comes from your carnal mind, and that, according to Paul in Romans 8, 7, is the enemy of God. Now, let's look at something else. In 1 Kings 6, 8, we're talking about, remember before, the right hemisphere of the brain. Now remember we said that Jesus sits at the right side and whenever you look, you know, to the east, if you're looking north, you look to the east, the east is on the right side. That's why the star of Bethlehem was in the east, the wise men come from the east. The wise men coming from the east to see Jesus at that Christmas story means wisdom comes from the presence of God when Christ enters into you and is born within you. Now. Here's something interesting. Let's talk about the right hemisphere of the brain. We're saying that the temple really is you. Remember something, you say, oh, you're taking an awful lot of license with the Bible. Let me, let me, t let me tell you why. Galatians 4.24, the Apostle Paul, in talking of the Old Testament, says which things are an allegory. An allegory is where the ancients used places and buildings and things like that to identify spiritual things inside of you. This book is not a geography book. It's not a history book. It's a mystical book. That's why they call it Bible. 
Now we talked about the temple. We saw it was built in silence, which means meditation. Now what about the right hemisphere of the brain? The door for the middle chamber. The middle chamber is the holy place. In Hebrews 10.19, the Apostle Paul said, you have authority to enter the holy place. And I would dare say most born-again Christians have the slightest idea what it is. They have no idea that it's the right hemisphere of their brain. Remember Jesus said when he was going to want to catch fish, cast your net to the right side of the boat? Well, look what it says here. When they were constructing this temple, it was built in silence, that means no thought, and the door for the middle chamber, or the holy place, okay, was put on the right side of the house. The right side. Why not put it on the left side? Why not put it downstairs? Why put it on the right side? Why is everything on the right side? Because it's talking about the right hemisphere of the brain. When you activate that through the meditation by overcoming the seven seals that we talked about a little earlier, you activate the right side of the brain. Brain cells come alive that you hadn't even used before, and that's why Paul said, I have the mind of Christ, because that's Christ consciousness. That's why, don't you understand, when the sun in December comes out of the winter solstice, it rises up and then sits at the right side, and what happens when the sun sits at the right side in April and May and June? Summer comes. The same thing that happens outside, which is the macrocosm, happens inside. And when your energy moves to the right side, summer comes to your life. Everything that has been dormant, everything that has been dead, comes back to life. Now, why is this interesting, too? Look at this. The door is on the right side. They went up with winding stairs. Okay? You get to them with winding stairs. That's very important. You know what that is? That's what they call in mysticism kundalini. It's that winding force that activates through meditation. It's that serpent, okay? You, did you ever see the caduceus on your doctor's lapel? The intertwining serpents going up that pole? That's kundalini. That's the winding stairs. That's the energy. I'll tell you another place you can see it. If you're at your doctor's or something, ask him to get his medical book out and take a look at DNA. You'll see the same thing. The form of DNA, the genetic makeup, it's winding. Everything is that secular motion of winding stairs is kundalini, what the ancients said kundalini. The coiled serpent uncoils and moves upward and devours all of that evil as it opens those seven seals and moves up into the pineal gland of the brain. That's why it moves with winding stairs. Now look what it says. When up with winding stairs, the kundalini up into the right side, into the middle chamber, and out of the middle chamber to the third. See that? To the third what? Where's it going to the third what? Well, if you look at 2 Corinthians in the New Testament, 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 2, the Apostle Paul talks about having an out-of-body experience. Well, actually, he wasn't sure what the heck it was. And he says in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 2, he says, I know a man in Christ about 14 years ago, whether in the body I cannot tell, or whether out of the body. He went into a trance, he went into a mystical experience, he went into a meditative experience, and he evidently had an out-of-body experience, but look what he says, such a one was caught up to the, what? Third heaven. The third heaven. Now, what does the construction of the temple say in 1 Kings? It's built in silence. That's meditation. That's why Jesus said meditate. If your eye be single, your body will fill with light. The holy place is at the right side. That's why Jesus said cast your net to the right side and you'll get fish. That's why the ancients said that you direct the energy to the right hemisphere of the brain by activating the pineal when you rise up those steps of kundalini on this and overcome the seven seals. It goes up with winding stairs, which is the circular, for, uh, circular force of Kundalini, the coiled serpent, out to the third heaven. Now, the reason that the third heaven, because in Greek, okay, the first and lowest place is earth, okay, the second is water, which means truth on a higher level, the third is air. I'm talking about consciousness. There's five degrees of consciousness in Greek, and the third is air, say, that's the third heaven. That's when it says we will rise to meet Jesus in the air and Christians think they're going to take off and go through the roof. They've misread rapture. Rapture is not a Christian word. Rapture is a Buddhist word. Rapture is one of the ten worlds of Shakyamuni Buddha and it means rising within yourself 
to a higher realm of consciousness above the thoughts of the mind. And when it says you will rise to meet Jesus in the air, it doesn't mean you're going to fly up through the roof or up over Kennedy Airport. It means you're going to rise within yourself up to the higher realms of consciousness above human thought. That's what rising into the air means. And so here, the Apostle Paul went up into the third heaven, and we understand that we get there in our temple, which is our consciousness, when we are in silence of meditation, directing our energy to the right hemisphere, the Kundalini activates up the seven seals of the winding stairs, taking us up into the holy place and out into the third, which is air, or the third stage of consciousness, is where you see God face to face.